Hello everybody, Tim Cross from Piranha here. We're out at Fabtech this year. I have the Piranha P65 in the booth here. We're gonna run through it real quick and show you what it can do. Punch end up here, punching, bending, pipe notching, lots of options you can put on the front here. Make quick work of putting some holes in some plates. Nice and open here, so you can see lots of workspace. You're basically only limited as your walls. Quick change tooling up on the front here. Loosen up this and slide that off so it's out of the way. No longer a pinch point up here, or you're ready to put your bending tools or whatever on there and get to work. We'll come on around here to the shear side. Great thing about this piranha, solid steel upper beam. This whole piece is one piece of steel. Lower beam's basically the same size. Huge crank arm, industrial cylinder, and hydraulics down below. Take care of running the machine. Huge pull arms and pins in here. Super robust. The, uh, the knife pockets are actually machined right into the solid piece of steel here. What that does, no shims, no push bolts or anything, setting your knife clearance. The uh, heavy duty, gonna last, makes knife changes and maintenance very easy on the machine. And it also allows us to keep a very low rake angle on our knife as you're coming through to shear the pieces. You'll see here, that combined with the urethane clamp on the plate down to the table, keeps your drop pieces and your keep pieces the, uh, nice and smooth, nice and flat. You see hardly any noise right as it goes through the plate, the uh, nice clean shear. So whether you're trimming a big piece, let's say that you marked a piece, you're trying to build something real quick, and like, ah, I just barely missed the mark on that. The, uh, we need to trim just a hair off of that. No problem to just take a two thick size piece right off the end of that. Nice and easy quick adjustment too to go from thin to thick or you're coming over to the angle section. So we're gonna open that up just a little bit. You can see real easy to go from thick to thin. Nice quick setting there. Again, we've got the urethane coming down to clamp the plate. The other thing that's gonna happen here is the upper blade's actually gonna go pivot until it finds the center of the angle here before it starts to trim through the piece. What that gives you, it keeps the legs nice and straight because you're trimming them both at the same time. And again, if you're doing production work, any of these stations can be set up with a foot pedal. You can set your limit switches, use the foot pedal, and go into full production. Another nice thing that we have on this machine here at the show, the uh, saw gear by Tiger Stop. Great option, it uh, makes it nice and quick if you're cutting long pieces of steel up into small stuff. Makes every operator your best operator, you're not measuring pieces, you don't have mistakes. It's as easy as 10 inches, you hit start. You run in, you cut a few of those, oh, now we need some 24 inch stuff. Runs it right out to 24. We'll go back here. What? This is the section of the machine. This usually turns out to be the guy's favorite tool in the shop. This is what they end up saying they can't live without. Again, the low rake angle here, you can see not much of a rake on that knife, even when it's open right there. The uh, Lots of power back here to come right through the angle. You can see that we pinched right through there, fill it and everything, the rounded part. Didn't try to kick it out, it just took it all out, one smooth cut. The, uh, the great thing that makes quick work of trying to build frames and stuff like that, you're ready to go. If you want a little stronger joint right here, if you're gonna lay some weld in there for a strong piece, we'll just trim that out. Come down through and even put a little bevel on the edge right there. You don't wanna try that on anyone else's iron worker. Kinda of where Piranha got the name, nibbling away at the metal, and it's also not letting go. You can see it's got that piece in there as it's making the cut, it's got a hold of it. We'll make a nice little trim out there. And you can see where you're ready to lay in some weld there. Let's say you're doing a 10 foot frame. You got 10 foot sticking out each way, it's no problem. We'll come in and clip a little 45 here. You can see it took it right out all the way to the fillet there and even marked it so it's ready to fold up. Let's say if you know you're going to a 90, you're gonna need a little relief cut in there. So we'll come in and just trim a little piece out of the end of there. The, another great thing, you start looking at how much you're spending on grinding wheels and stuff, the guy's just getting rid of sharp edges and stuff on their plate. Come in here and we'll just make a couple clips. And 
and you just saved a ton of grinding wheels and time. Again, that dovetail slide, things slide off and on great. Get these out of our way. We'll come down with the machine a little bit and actually use it to center it up on our four-way here. Come down and pinch it a little bit and then fold it up. And there's your corner. The, uh, if you need to get some holes in here, if you're doing some mounting or if you're doing some frames, we can do that. I'll show you another little trick. Oh, we got the Vinny attachment on there. Let's say you're needing to make some brackets or pipe hangers. Come down and get your bend set. Again, coming over to the limit switches here so we can repeat that bend. I'm going to let it go up a little way so we clear the plate. Switch is going to turn your limit switches on. Now the foot pedal is live as well so you can have your hands to do the work here. And we've made pretty good, quick work out of a pipe hanger, bracket, trailer stake, anything like that. Again, when you're ready to get some holes in stuff, the, uh, we'll turn that off and get this stuff out of the way and go back to punch some holes. Again, you just loosen up that, that lets the shoe drop down and these slides off. Turn on our four-way for the dive block and the stripper assembly. Again, that dovetail slides right on a positive stop here so you're back in position. A quick lock of that so it's tied down. And your dive box the same way. It's got these set screws that come in right here for indexing against the studs. So you come in and over and again you reposition. You always want to double check, make sure you're lined up fast and slow with the joystick here so we've got full tonnage, full speed, or you've got jogs. So if you're setting up tools or if you're trying to do something small, you can easily get down to your piece and then ease it in to check your alignment or do small work. The stripper assembly's actually got a hold of the dive box here. We don't have to worry about it moving that way. We can lock down our nuts there, and we're ready to punch some holes. You can see here another nice thing. Not only are we all the way open up here, but we also, the dive protrudes through the front of the block on purpose here, allows you on angle or channel to get in as tight as possible. We also make dives with offset holes to get you even closer this way if you need to get right in next to the leg. Punch your hole. We're ready to go. And let's say the, uh, we either need some holes in there so we can lay some weld in, or let's say we're putting this up for a pipe hanger or something, we need to get some holes in there. And again, if you're setting up for production, you don't want to come down and get your hole through and then reset your limits. And you're back to foot pedal use. We're quickly being able to punch some holes. So thanks for joining us out here. If you guys got any questions, give us a shout at the factory. Thanks.